So if that was your winning ticket for the uh, firefighters 50-50, you need to head over the bridge and uh, visit them by the fire trucks and uh, they'll set you up with your winnings. It's a 50-50 draw, so uh, there's money for you. Pro Bracket, Bubba Speed Shop, Pro Bracket as they head down track, Rick McKinney and Ross Walker. Semi-final round action. Wind light comes on for Ross Walker. Goes 10-16, 128 miles an hour. So Ross Walker moving on to the next round in Pro Bracket. Also going into the final as a result of a bye run is Bobby Ehlers in the Mustang. Ehlers out of Maple Ridge. He'll complete the run here, and uh, then he goes right into the finals up against Ross Walker. So that's going to take care of Pro Bracket and get us our final round action there. We're just moving through the program, getting to the uh, finals in almost every category. So three cars left in the Super Pro category, the Vancouver Car Wraps Super Pro, and it is going to be over here, Craig Johnson in the station wagon, and Al McKay-Smith in the 65 Nova wagon. McKay-Smith from Merritt, where he is a farmer by trade, driving that 585 cubic inch 65 Nova wagon, not how it came from the factory, I might add. Craig Johnson, 79 Malibu wagon. Craig, a regular runner and consistent and tough to beat. Let's see what happens here on this run. He got the handicap start, dialed in at 10.89. Al McKay Smith is chasing him down at the quarter mile, not able to get around him. Craig Johnson, Gets there with a 1097. Now check this out. I'm not even sure how you read that. The margin of victory is, it'd be less than nine ten thousand, wouldn't it? If it was, well, here's the margin of victory. Point zero, 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 nine. So uh, taking it out to the fourth decimal point, uh, that is a, it was really tight. Let's just say it was a squeaker at the top end. So, uh, Steven Robert now. He gets the bye run to go into the final up against Craig Johnson. Craig's not the uh, quickest car on the property, but you don't have to be the quickest car to win. You got to be the most consistent car to win. And that is where Craig Johnson has a few cards up his sleeve. Steven Robert goes 9.22, 130 miles an hour. So that sets up the final in Super Pro. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We need Outlaw 275, Limited Street and 604 to the staging lanes, please. That's right, MDA Fabrication, Outlaw 275, Limited Street, and 604 to the staging lanes. So here we are, final round in Super Combo. It's gonna be Warren Jacobson here, tower side, and John Lackey on the other side of the racetrack, the Lord Co. Lane. 1090 is the index, that's the number they're shooting for. You can see it on the scoreboard at the top end. 1090 is what they gotta go under. 1090 with a six is good for a win for John Lackey. Again, 21 ten thousandths of a second. So uh, margin of victory very, very tight there as well as Warren Jacobson ran 1092.
Taking care of your car is a responsibility. It ensures the long life of your car and its expensive components. That's why Lucas Oil takes automotive protection so seriously. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer bonds with motor oil to shield engines from heat and wear. So take pride in caring for your car and pass that pride and knowledge to the next generation for years of smooth, reliable driving on the long road ahead. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Quality is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, knowledgeable effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wiser choice of many alternatives. JBS Equipment, the field's the limit. From imports to domestics, McLeod's drivetrain components are built to handle the abuse, clutches, flywheels, and transmissions. McLeod's 25,000 square foot manufacturing facility will accommodate you no matter what you drive. From the street to the track, become McLeod equipped. I want to once again thank all of the folks that have absolutely packed the stands at Titanium Strip at the Mission Raceway Park here tonight, as well as the 200 plus people watching us on MRP Lordco TV. It has been one heck of a night to say the least. There have been, you know, some firsts. There's been so stuff that we don't see every other day, and there's been some mighty fine racing going on there as well. And there is still plenty more to come as well, including one more visit from the Volcano Jet Dragster. That we last we heard was going to be coming on up around 9:30 ish. So stick around for that because if you thought it was impressive in the daytime, oh, it looks completely different under the lights. I want to once more just give a huge shout out to Valley Tech Productions for doing an awesome work on the production so far for us here tonight. 
along with uh, the live drone coverage being provided by Still Real Productions. I mean, it has just been a real pleasure having them on board for this 2022 season, but especially at some of our bigger events, such as Door Wars 10 and, of course, uh, Smoke, Fire, and Thunder. It's really helped us to uh, you know, reach new horizons that... Uh, you know, previously probably would not have been terribly possible, but definitely want to give a huge shout out to them and a huge thank you for, you know, helping them to make uh, this season as best as it possibly could be. Those sentiments, Nolan, that is uh, well said. We still have the odd item here that was uh, lost on the property. There is a, a debit card here from a certain bank that uh, is not signed. So I can't tell you if it's your card or not, but if you can come up and identify what the bank is, uh, we can certainly uh, return that to you. It is a, a debit card that was lost, I believe, on the spectator side. So you may want to check your wallet and see if uh, it has everything that you thought it should have. So you can see the uh, track preparation that is taking place. Again, as the uh, air cools and the track cools, the track cools off pretty fast. So we've still got some hot cars, Canada West door slammers and everything else, rolling uh, up to the staging lanes eventually for their final qualifying session. And uh, so as a result of that, we do a little bit of track preparation just to make sure that it is in tip top shape. Still warm out there, 20 degrees. So no problem in terms of dew point or anything like that it's just a matter of uh, rubbing the track a little bit to keep it nice and warm in the evening that's what happens there but the byproduct of course is that it lays down just a little bit of more rubber from the slicks that are hanging on the back of the tractors and uh, that's probably a good time as any to mention to all racers in the pits if you've got some old slicks that you no longer need uh, you might want to check with Steve Sikora and uh, uh, say, uh, hey, I got some old slicks. Do you need them? He needs a certain size, but uh, he would be happy to take them off your hands. Just got the word that the uh, beer garden is closing in 20 minutes. I thought he was going to say 20 seconds, but that might cause a rush. No, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Beer Garden is going to close in 20 minutes, so if you're uh, 19 or over, I think that's the age limit, isn't it? Then you uh, might want to head over for one last one, and if you've had a couple, hopefully you've uh, taken all of the uh, measures to have uh, a good safe drive home with a designated driver. We are really happy that you're here enjoying yourself, and we don't normally have a beer garden, but uh, in this particular case, we had a feeling that this was going to be a... Uh, big deal and all of you race fans made sure that it turned out to be a big deal so thank you for showing up so it looks like uh, there is going to be some titanium shirts that are going to be uh, launched into the crowd
So just a word to uh, all the racers in the pits. Oh, I see it now. Juniors are launching some t-shirts. They got one of those, uh, they're armed with a uh, air compressor and they're firing at people. Wave your hands if you want a shirt. Hey, that compressor's working quite nicely. Let them know that you're interested. Give them a hand and all the juniors put on such a great program here at Mission Raceway. And this year has been absolutely outstanding. The best year that I have ever seen in my uh, eight, 10 years of announcing here at Mission Raceway. So uh, it is quite something. We'll have junior dragsters, uh, roughly 20 of them. One time, even more than 20. So what a great program that that is and a great program they put on. So wave your hands and let them know and uh, the uh, juniors will fire some shirts at you. Hey, just wanted to mention for all racers in the crowd, if you've won, if you've completed your final and won, and you want your trophy this evening, well, that is certainly possible. Now, we are taking photos of all winners tomorrow at the winner's circle. So you could wait, pick up your trophy at that point. But if you would like your trophy now, they are up here on the second floor of the tower. You can come pick it up and uh, bring it along with you for photos tomorrow. Okay, so just want to mention that. And uh, Steve Nicholson, if you're still on the property, we've got uh, something, uh, a little envelope here from Door Wars 10 Pro Mod. So Steve Nicholson, if you're still on the property and anywhere close to the tower, feel free to come up and uh, we can pass that on to you. Pay attention in the pits. Door slammers, Canada West door slammers. We're calling you to the lanes. Five and six, Canada West door slammers. We need you to lanes five and six. And that means ProMod, we're gonna put you on standby. ProMod, you're on standby. Keith, let me know if you're uh, coming up to the tower. We'll do a little cheat ch chit chat, a cheat chat. It's the end of the day. Words are coming out fast and furious. Here we go, semi-final now. Semi-final for Outlaw. No, I take that back. It's Super Combo. I get me my right tech sheet.
So I am, uh, yeah, I gotta work on my pressing the button. Now I've got the right Outlaw 275 numbers up in front of me. Rick McLeod, this is semi-final action. Dan Rodriguez, Yarrow, and Rick McLeod from Vernon. They're out to the eighth mile and charging hard with the wind light coming on for Dan Rodriguez. Goes 4.58, 157 miles an hour. McLeod had the better reaction time, but it was Rodriguez that got there quicker. Rick McLeod goes 470 with a 9, 150 miles an hour, but Dan Rodriguez goes 458. So that sets him for final round action. And who will he race in Outlaw 275? MDA Fabrication, Outlaw 275. Is it going to be the Mustang? Or is it going to be the Camaro? Classic Ford versus Chevy battle here. Jordan Brandon, side money Camaro from Lethbridge. He's the uh, number two qualifier. Quickest time, 445 here this weekend. John Cuglietta from Edmonton is in that gold-colored 2004 Mustang. He's qualified in at number three with a 447. So... Who will be the other contender in Outlaw 275? Finals being set up. Dan Rodriguez already in. Will it be Jordan Brandon? John Cuglietta? Taking their time. Staging ever so carefully. Doing all the things in the cockpit they need to do. Getting the car charged and primed. Crew member standing out front, giving the drivers just a little bit of a heads up in terms of where the start line is. So uh, give them a read so that they have just a little bit more option to stage as shallowly as they like. They're both pre-stage. Roll forward another eight inches, break the stage beams. They are off. What's it gonna be, the Mustang or the Camaro? It is. Jordan Brandon of 440, 164 miles an hour. That is going to be facing Dan Rodriguez. So John Cuglietta had the slower reaction time, 444, 161 miles an hour. But Jordan Brandon is uh, your winner this round going into the final in MDA Fabrication Outlaw 275. So Justin Gallant rolling up for a uh, test pass. Obviously made changes to the, in the pits and uh, looking to suss out whether he made the right moves. Go off the gas at about 330 feet and uh, Coast through with a 543, 96 miles per hour, gathering uh, whatever information they need. Here's the instant replay on the big screen.
semifinal round action then in Limited Street. And that's going to bring up Chris McGraw and Justin Gibson. Chris McGraw over here in the Mustang. He calls Flipper six liter Mustang. Chris McGraw has had a best time of 548. Justin Gibson, your number two qualifier, best 541. They're off. Racing to the eighth mile, and it will be a wind light coming on for McGraw. Chris McGraw picks up the wind, goes 542. 542 at 127 miles an hour. So Chris McGraw going into the final. Who will he race? Will it be Vanessa Richards or Miguel Foitino? Vanessa Richards over here, tower side, out of Kelowna. No telling why racers call their cars whatever they do. This one's Hawaii 5 0. 1989 Mustang. And it is uh, picked up sponsorship from Gen 3 Speed, Precision Concepts, Titanium Auto Group, Fast Lane, Nitrous Racing Systems, Norval Rentals, Kelowna Chevy, and Lordco. On the Lordco side, Miguel Foitino, Precision Racing Engines, 1986 Mustang over there as well. Very popular body style, especially those Fox bodies. It's almost like there's a whole lot of them around. They're just the right wheelbase to uh, handle upwards of a thousand horsepower. And that small rear slick, that's all it needs. Vanessa, your number one qualifier, her best time this weekend, 5.38. Is she going into the final? Yes, she is. Miguel goes red and off the gas right away. Vanessa Richards runs 545, 128 miles an hour. And so she will be going into the final in Limited Street. Six oh four semifinals. Mandy Brooks, Don Murray, who is going into the final round. Well, each of them wants to be there. Only one of them can be there. Don Murray, he's in the Green Goblin. That's seventy Cuda. Talked about it when the there was daylight. You go by his pit area and look under the hood, and uh, that four twenty six Hemi has uh, pretty much stuffed that place. Wow, so Mandy Brooks out of Chilliwack, 69 Nova. Getting a bit of a handicap start. They run it out to the quarter mile. And it looks like Mandy not able to hang on to the win. Don Murray gets around her at the top end, 933. 933 at 140 miles an hour. The three cars in the final or the semifinal here in 604. Mike Probin getting the buy run in his 66 Nova. Sponsored by Probin Motors, 383 cubic inches. Hey, attention over there on the spectator side. We're still waiting for the uh, ticket holder 741. 4865 to uh, head over to the firefighters. They uh, they have your 50 50 winnings over there. So 741 4865. And we also have another number that is a winner. 2424 209. So if you're holding that ticket number, you bought 50 50 tickets from the firefighters. And you're holding that ticket 2429. They have uh, a prize waiting for you. And attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We need Hot Rod to the staging lanes, please. Hot Rod, we're calling you to the staging lanes. So 
So here we go with the uh, final in Sportsman. Final in Sportsman is going to be Randy Hermson and Jim Mantle. Hermson got there. He beat out Sylvia Hoogston in the first round. And then he took out Ryan Wakeman. And then in the next round, it was Kai Jessamine. Red light start for Jim Mantle. So that means Randy Hermson is going to take home a trophy today. Winner in Sportsman. Randy Hermson. So congratulations to Randy. He's always here bright and early cleaning up stuff. Not sure if you saw on the uh, Facebook page that he uh, he even developed some kind of a magnet roller that he uses in the pit area that puts behind his golf cart early, early in the morning because he's just such an early bird. And he'll take that through the uh, different areas where there's grass and everything else and the magnet picks up all sorts of uh, things you don't want to step on. Hey, we got another car that needs to be moved. Another car that needs to be moved. It's a CX-5. CX-5, if that's what you're driving. And uh, you've got a license plate, 071LTT. Boy, we need you to move that CX-5 ASAP. So once again, congratulations to Randy Hermson. All racers, if you uh, win this evening, you can pick up your trophies here in the tower, or you can certainly wait because we'll be taking photos tomorrow in the sunlight at the Winner's Circle. West door slammer action now rolling into the beams. Burnouts complete for James Kennedy and Brian Ritchie. Door slammer's uh, weekend sponsor coming to you from Greenlight Auto Sales and Financing. Talk a little bit more about them as we get a break in the action. James Kennedy, Brian Ritchie, this is. Uh, their fourth qualifying session. So having an abundance of opportunity here this weekend to uh, put some runs on the cars and get them tuned up for eliminations that are gonna take place tomorrow. Canada West Door Slammers will be uh, just about on the hour tomorrow. It looks like a 770 for James Kennedy, and that's his uh, quickest run of uh, the weekend. 798 and 171 miles per hour for Brian Ritchie. He'll stay with his earlier time of 796. So both those guys slot into the 9 and 10 position. As Derek Shirk driving something a little bit different, Jay's Dakota. So Derek having problems with his transmission earlier in the weekend and now driving the Dakota. Jason Field in the other lane. He is green light auto sales and financing. Calls the 71 Nova Lil Overkill. 632 cubic inches of nitrous action. So uh, Jason Field, quickest run so far this weekend, 822 with an eight. Derek Shirk has run 767. All these cars have to run 870 or better. Be in the program tomorrow. All right, Jason 
Field rolls in. Pre-stage. Eric does likewise. They are uh, inching closer now. Wait for the uh, green light to see if they can make improvement. Both cars hitting down track. Looks to be a nice clean run for both of them. 758. A little better for uh, Derek Shirk. 177 miles an hour. 825, not better than the uh, 822 for Jason Field. Derek Shirk bumps up to the number five spot. Jason, number 12. Long burnout there. It's interesting the uh, different burnout patterns for the different cars. Some don't like to cross the line and some do. Bill Bolt in his Camaro, he doesn't like to cross the start line. 69 Camaro was sponsored by Brutus Truck Bodies out of Penticton. The Blue Max, on the other hand, out of Cloverdale, well, he likes to uh, not only cross the start line, but go well down track on a burnout. Each car set up to make sure that all the internal systems are taken care of over uh, the burnout and that the fuel system is set up in such a way that they don't burn too much fuel. The Blue Max has run a best of eight flat in the number 11 spot right now. Number 20 spot is Bill Bolt and he's run a best of 863. Let's see if we can make some improvements here. Shoots out for Dave Warren in the Blue Max 799. That's good for him to improve ever so slightly. 163 miles an hour. And 926 for the other car. Speaking of long burnouts, wow, John DeYoung just torturing those uh, springs, the valve springs, and the slicks. He likes long burnouts. His 68 Camaro set up for that. Number two qualifier in the sixes. 688 with an eight. 201 miles an hour. He is uh, quite literally one of the, uh, the quick three in the category, sponsored by Total Dairy Solutions. That is the family business. So John DeYoung over on the spectator side. Blake Miller over here, all the way in from Victoria. Searles Auto Repair, 67 Camaro. Got 621 cubic inches under the hood. Quickest time he's run is 8.69. Looking real close out of the gas. That's right, John DeYoung moving way over, and it looks like he hit a block. We've got the uh, signal disruptor up here in the tower. So not only uh, close, but uh, clipped a block. You can watch it on the instant replay. There it goes. Pop the block right off, so we'll have to send the safety crew down there, and uh, they will reinstall one of those uh, incremental timer blocks. So that time will be disallowed. Blake Miller, 872. John DeYoung was actually, uh, he went red out the gate and um, he hit that uh, block, but then was definitely off the gas. Discretion being the better part of valor, he uh, coasts through with a 1019 already. Got a 688 on the books, so he's going to stick with that number two slot.
So this weekend's racing for the Canada West Door Slammers is presented by Greenlight Auto Sales and Financing, in which uh, they ask you this question. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you aren't, Greenlight Auto Financing, they have access to over 1,500 vehicles, varying from all makes and models with decades of experience. They pride themselves on honesty and compassion. The focus is getting you approved through the large pool of lenders, and they offer free delivery anywhere in BC. They're located at 7179 Horn Street in Mission, you can contact Greenlight Auto Sales and Financing, or you can go online and check them out at greenlightautofinancing.ca to get approved today. Canada West Door Slammers, of course, run their season as part of a larger pool of sponsors with each weekend. One of those sponsors being represented, but it's probably a good idea since we have some downtime just to talk about all the people, the association sponsors who uh, help do their part to keep things on the track. They've got their title sponsor, Winter Harbor Marina and RV. Artex Barn Solutions, Greenlight Auto Sales, and VP Race Fuel Distributor Jason Field, Paradise Homes, Associated Tire and Auto, along with Alpine Backhoe, Lance Racing, Comox, Valley Bobcat, and Excavating, TCS Performance Products, and Traveland RV. So those are all the good folks that are uh, part of the sponsorship program for Canada West Door Slammers and we thank them. There are uh, signage boards all over the racetrack and we always encourage you if you see a sign of a uh, vendor uh, supplies a product that you need we encourage you to uh, check them out. We uh, ask them to uh, support us and so we'll ask you to support them. It's one way that we can ensure that racing continues here at the Titanium Strip at Mission Raceway. So just got word that uh, Darian Provost, who is uh, on the property celebrating a birthday, I'd, uh, I'd sing happy birthday, but then we'd get uh, demonetized on YouTube. And also, uh, it would be a bit torturous for you to hear me sing happy birthday. He's celebrating his 22nd birthday, so uh, hey, happy birthday to you, Darian Provost. We've seen him... Uh, race here a lot and certainly his dad racing as well so uh, good to see that family uh, in the racing way and uh, so happy birthday Darian we're still out there uh, adjusting the timing blocks the incremental timers that you see all rely on a uh, sensor and infrared beam 
there is uh, those orange blocks of reflectors on them. They are positioned at the 60 foot, 330 foot, and at the eighth mile with mile per hour and ET, and then a thousand feet, and then at the quarter mile with mile per hour as well. So we've got those orange blocks out there serving a good purpose for not only the timing here in the tower, but also the racers getting the information that they need for the tune-up. So you see the start line crew move, removing the uh, awning. That can only mean one thing, that there is a, uh, a jet in our future. So as you can well imagine, setting up the or replacing those timing blocks is a rather intricate affair in that uh, it needs to be reflective of both sides of the racetrack. The infrared beam comes in from each side and it has to reflect off the center there. So the positioning has to be right on. And, uh, and that's what we're uh, just doing at this moment. We're also clearing the uh, start line of anything that might uh, blow away because uh, jets have a way of doing that. Taking care of your car is a responsibility. It ensures the long life of your car and its expensive components. That's why Lucas Oil takes automotive protection so seriously. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer bonds with motor oil to shield engines from heat and wear. So take pride in caring for your car and pass that pride and knowledge to the next generation for years of smooth, reliable driving on the long road ahead. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Quality is never an accident. It is the result of high intention. 
knowledgeable effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wiser choice of many alternatives. JBS Equipment, the field's the limit. From imports to domestics, McLeod's drivetrain components are built to handle the abuse, clutches, flywheels, and transmissions. McLeod's 25,000 square foot manufacturing facility will accommodate you no matter what you drive. From the street to the track, become the cloud equipped. Got that timer all set up, and so we're uh, set to finish off qualifying here in Canada West Door Slammer action. Rod LeClaire and Howie Winklehorst. Rod LeClaire, another one of those uh, six-second cars, but uh, he has not been up to speed this weekend so far. His quickest, 7.57. So obviously looking, uh, having made some changes, they're looking to uh, still find that magic six. Wherever it is, he's qualified in at number four, so he's right up at the top. Howie is number 13. He's out of Abbotsford, heavy equipment mechanic, and he's in that uh, relatively stock-bodied 55 Chevy. I say stock because this one has 620 cubic inches under the hood, and uh, that's, not, uh, that's not the way they came from the factory, as I recall. So again, racing to the quarter mile here, and it is qualifying session number four for Canada West Door Slammers. Howie getting out of the groove and getting close to the center line and uh, boy, he's struggling using up all of the quarter mile. So Rod LeClaire, yeah, he bumps it into the sixes. Six, 77 with a five. So he goes up into the number one spot. Head of Greg Field and John DeYoung. So on the big screen, we're watching the replay of Howie struggling to keep that 55 Chevy in the groove. Kept wanting to drift over to the center line and uh, he did a great job manhandling it. Stay in the groove. Here's Eric Horvath now. He's also been struggling. Has a best time of 880 with a three. Car can run much better. And he's out of shape right at the hit, heading for the wall and getting off the gas. So not wanting to go straight whatsoever. So Tommy Gunn's Barbershop 63 vet going back into the pits. He'll have one more opportunity tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock to uh, get that car sorted out to be in the program. Twenty-two cars on the property. Peter Lucanis and Tom Katnick are the next pair down track. Peter's in the Transporter Logistics 63 Corvette that just came out of the water box. Tom Katnick backing up his uh, very swoopy TK Performance sponsored Camaro. Tom is uh, in the number seven spot right now with his quick time of 7.61. Peter Lucanis. Not always in the, uh, the the quick half of the field, but a consistent runner nonetheless in the number 18 spot with an 862. So uh, again, both drivers looking to make some improvement. Will it happen? That's what we will see. Try to stay in the groove. Katnick gets there with a 759. So that's a bit of an improvement for him on his 761. 862, six. Pretty much the same as the uh, 862-2 for Peter Lucanis. So Katnick in the number six spot, and Peter remains in the number 18 spot. 
So by, uh, by my reckoning, that is it for Canada West Door Slammer qualifying number four. And that gets us into Hot Rod. Martin Jackman and Ron Clark heading down track in the uh, semifinal here. Who will it be in the final? Well, it's going to be one contender. That's Martin Jackman. Goes 13.05, 102 miles an hour. It takes that 64 Chevelle into the final. And he will be up against Mark Brenzinger. The out of time Nova. As usual, wheels up nice and high. That car just transfers weight in a way that uh, it likes it. Can't keep a good car down. 966 with a 5, 136 miles an hour. So Brenzinger going into the final of Hot Rod, which we'll see very, very shortly. All right, Pro Mod now. West Coast Pro Mods. That is what's coming up next. Kerry Stone. I got the lowdown on Kerry Stone. That car has been up for sale for a while. He managed to uh, get a six flat or a six low six run earlier. He said if he gets into the fives, that is it. He's retiring. He wants to get that car into the fives. Got it set up. He thinks he can do it. Five second run. And uh, that uh, is going to launch his retirement plans. So let's just see. He felt it last round. Will it come through? Five second run in that Camaro. He's actually going to be racing the full quarter mile. So it's set up to run the full quarter mile, and that's where he wants to run the five. Five, 99, or better. So Kerry Stone putting it all on the line here. West Coast Pro Mod action. If you love that car, it is for sale. You should go talk to Kerry in the pits. He is pre staged. And we're set. Bumps in. And he is off. Looks to be connecting. Nope. Going to the center line. Oh, hang on. Hang on, Kerry. Managed to save that one and uh, pop the chutes to straighten the car out. So not going to be the five that he was hoping for. 626. Watch it up again on the uh, big screen. So he was everything was fine up until about the eighth mile. And then it drifted right over and uh, managed to bring it back at speed into the center groove. So Kerry Stone manages to uh, save that car and uh, it will live another day. 626, 193 miles an hour. So a uh, good driving job for Kerry Stone. Not the five he was hoping for, but the car is intact. Hey, we got another story with Steve Goddard as well. He is looking for a 399. 
That's right. In the other lane, Keith Garecki. So Steve Goddard feels that uh, in the eighth mile, 399 is in the cards for him. That's the uh, ACS Red Deer 2008 Mustang here on the tower side. Steve Goddard wanting to, uh, well, he gives himself a goal. He wants to be in that three second club. In the other lane, Keith Karecki, man who created that uh, that body style that has become so popular, 67 Shelby. He's got a uh, whopping 814 cubic inches. Wow. You can tell how much humidity is in the air by the uh, volume of plume that you see from those nitrous purges. Uh, if there's no humidity, like in the desert, you can barely see the nitrous that is being purged. Or it comes out in a very straight, confined line. Uh, here tonight, lots of humidity, lots of moisture in the air. And so it uh, mushrooms out, and you can really see it as they purge the nitrous, getting the uh, bottles to the right pressure that they want, getting all the air out of the tubes. Keith Karecki, a machinist out of Kelowna, has run a uh, best today of 456. Oh no, Steve Goddard out of control as well as Keith Karecki. He was not able to stay in his lane, crossed over and uh, that signaled the end of his run. So it uh, looks like we'll have uh, both runs disallowed. Watch it again on the big screen as uh, you see Steve Goddard having trouble and then Keith Karecki just all of a sudden, you know, if he didn't have, uh, if he didn't use his blinkers, he really should have used the, uh, that was a great opportunity to use your blinkers on your pro mod because uh, that was a pretty hard left turn. But he made it to the top end. No harm, no foul, nobody hit, and uh, he is safe to move on to uh, another qualifying session. So yeah, Goddard was set up for a run, but lost traction and right at the hip. And so uh, he was out of it. And that's a good thing, too, because of what Keith Karecki wound up doing. So we are, uh, you could say, blessed that uh, the cars in the other lane are not any closer than they are, allowing for some of the action to take place the way that it has been. Steve Nicholson now from Alder Grove, Diversified Metals sponsored 63 Corvette. He is your number one. Pro Mod right now with a 4.53 at the eighth mile. All drivers seeming to have uh, just a little bit of trouble maneuvering down the track in either lane, either set up to uh, too light or set up not enough horsepower. Sometimes too aggressive, sometimes not aggressive enough. Steve Nicholson from Aldergrove then. Again, purging the nitrous, big clouds. So Steve Nicholson rolling in ever so carefully. Again, trying to take advantage of the track. Looks like he made a nice clean pass. It certainly did. 415. So big improvement over his 453. 174 miles per hour. Pops both shoots at the top end. So uh, 415 
as I say, massive improvement over his previous times. So he's got to be happy with that run. Shows you can get down that lane if you have the setup right. It's all about making sure you got the setup going for the conditions of the track. And uh, Steve Nicholson had the job. So I see Top Fuel Harleys now underneath the bridge. And we're, uh, we're looking like it might be a pair. Nate Gagnon and Jim Schellenberg. Notice that they fire him up with the rider off to the side. I've said this before. Looking at about a thousand pounds and a thousand horsepower. Running it on nitro gives it a tremendous boost in horsepower. Nate. Gagnon, earlier this evening, ran a uh, 642. Just over 212 miles an hour, so he is, uh, I'm sure, looking for uh, a bit of an improvement. Jim Schellenberger, Surrey truck driver. He's over on the Lorco side of the racetrack. Nate Gagnon, here tower side. And uh, he's your 2012 world champion, 2013 Canadian champion on the top school Harley scene. So he's got the credentials, he's got the cred. And uh, now we're going to see if he's got the setup for the conditions here at Smoke, Fire and Thunder, presented by Lord Co. Danielle, free stage. Schellenberg, moving up. They're both pre-staged now, getting set to break the second beam. Four bulbs are now lit. They are off. Wow, manhandling that. Jim Schellenberger sticking so close, and he hits a cone. Yeah, he was trying real hard to stay away. A lot of body English, leaning, 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 but could not help but hit the cones at the top end. So... Nate Gagnon, on the other hand, makes an improvement on his run. There you see it on the replay, 640 at 213. So Nate Gagnon going quicker, but Jim, once you get out of the groove, man, oh man, it is so hard to maintain any traction because there is no stickiness outside the groove. So unfortunate for Jim Schellenberger, he uh, not able to make any improvement. He goes 714. 156 miles an hour, that in and of itself is a pretty scary ride. So the safety crew once again called into action, and uh, it has uh, been a long day for them, and it is definitely not over yet. You saw that uh, Jim Schellenberg had the uh, incident with the top-end cones, so two of them. We call them cones, but they're actually blocks. Two of them out, so uh, we'll have to send out uh, crew, and uh, we'll also have to do a little bit of a cleanup because when he hit them, they do uh, come apart, and put stuff all over the racetrack. So, uh, and that has to be brushed off just to make sure that, uh, hey, the last thing you want to do is uh, be running out to the uh, eighth mile at a couple hundred miles an hour and find all sorts of stuff out there that you have to run over or avoid. So that's where we're at, 19, 20 degrees still on the property and so uh, we appreciate all of you hanging out with us we got the jet car that is coming up in just a couple of minutes we're uh, we've got the pro mod bikes that are uh, 
set to go. And then we've got the Nitro Funny Cars, and then the Jet Car, and then we've got final rounds in the last few categories uh, to close out the night. So uh, we'll just be down for a few minutes here as we uh, head out to the top end and reposition the blocks. And also, uh, we got to glue them down, make sure that they stay where they're supposed to be. And as I mentioned, the incremental timers are based on infrared reflectors. So the blocks need to be set up uh, accurately so that they do reflect the time to the thousands of a second as uh, racers are used to receiving that information in setting up their cars. So uh, that's the deal there. We'll just be down for a few minutes while they do that. Taking care of your car is a responsibility. It ensures the long life of your car and its expensive components. That's why Lucas Oil takes automotive protection so seriously. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer bonds with motor oil to shield engines from heat and wear. So take pride in caring for your car and pass that pride and knowledge to the next generation for years of smooth, reliable driving on the long road ahead. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Quality is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, knowledgeable effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wiser choice of many alternatives. JBS Equipment, the field's the limit. From imports to domestics, McLeod's drivetrain components are built to handle the abuse, clutches, flywheels, and transmissions. McLeod's 25,000 square foot manufacturing facility will accommodate you no matter what you drive. From the street to the track, become McLeod equipped. So safety crew still out at the top end, getting uh, the alignment correct on the blocks. 
We're just uh, monitoring that up here in the tower. We have a readout board that uh, gives us uh, red lights when the sensors are working. So uh, they're just positioning uh, some of those uh, blocks. Two of them were taken out. So uh, we're just going to need a couple of minutes to get those uh, back into place. Safety crew returning back to the start line, and that is a good sign that we are about to uh, finish up some racing here. So thank you very much for your patience. It's been a long day, but it's certainly been a long day for everybody, including that safety crew that have been out here since, uh, well, before 9 o'clock, and they were out here till uh, midnight last night. So uh, it sort of starts blurring together one day into the next. So we want to thank the safety crew for, uh, well, all the group at the uh, start line and the water box and everything for uh, the hard work that they do uh, keeping these races flowing along. So got the Pro Mod bikes all set to uh, make their run. Rob Aston over here. Tower side out of Calgary, the Cure Zen Customs. It's 2018 Suzuki. And uh, they get the word, fire them up. And Matt McKay Smith yes, over yes, on the 2018 the Suzuki. He's on the Lord Coast side of the racetrack. 
Once again, in the pits, all finalists. We need you back to the lanes, ASAP. All finalists, back to the lanes, ASAP. So on the start line now, getting ready to uh, make a hit. Rob Aston, Matt McKay-Smith in the Pro Mod motorcycles. They're pre-staged. Get set. Get down to quarter mile. The revs come up. They are off and running. Nice smooth runs all the way down. 6.70 at 200 miles an hour. 6.70. 200 miles an hour for Matt McKay Smith. 714, 189 miles an hour for Rob Aston.
Oh, yeah, it's a spark plug probably exiting. Spark plug or uh, uh, maybe a rod. Not a, not a rod, a uh, uh, timing or a valve. Oh, Jerry, I think we've got a little action going on here. Uh oh, what's going on? Well, some jalopies pulled up here to try to give everyone a run for their money. I want to get that door fixed. Uh, I think the door's coming. Driver, are you doing okay down there? You look like you've got a little bit of engine trouble. Actually, that might be the least of his problems. I think <laughs> I think you might need a mechanic. I think we're looking for. Mechanic MIG. Is there a mechanic MIG in the house? All right, we're looking for a mechanic. Where is he? Where is but maybe, yeah, check the door first, buddy, and then maybe we can go from there. Ah, here comes the mechanic. Okay, all right. Stay calm, everybody. It's under control. All right, okay. MIG, check that flux capacitor in there. I think maybe give that a kick. <laughs> what, what time zone were you thinking of? Uh, Whoa! Oh! 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 oh. Mig, you're on fire, buddy! Run, run around! Maybe try, try spinning? Stop, drop, and roll. Uh, Isn't that the deal? Stop, drop, and roll doesn't always work in these situations. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, and there he goes, just standing there, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you would call a fire burn. Look at that! Give him some claps, ladies and gentlemen, on fire for your benefit. Nice, way to go, Mechanic Mig. Let's go in there and put him out. Good job. Wow. That's a brave man. That's a brave man with a little surprise fun there from the Hard Knock Stunt Team. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you to the Hard Knock Stunt Team. I still think you gotta take that car to the shop. It might need a dent or two pulled out. We, we can fix that. <laughs> So the Volcano Dragster, 
Getting set. Warming it up. Warming it up. The engine producing over 6,000 pounds of thrust. If you've never seen a jet dragster, this is your opportunity. Here at Smoke, Fire, and Thunder, 24 gallons of fuel going into that tank over the quarter mile. Producing an estimated 14,000 horsepower. Chuck Haynes out of Billings, Montana. Calls it the volcano. Pratt and Windy engine. Get the revs up, get set. It's gonna fire up. They're gonna put the afterburner on. Fuel going into the afterburner, going to uh, ignite that flame. There you go. So when he kicks in, So putting raw fuel over the uh, the jet, creating flames out the back end. Looking to make a 300 mile per hour run. He'll do some short burner pops now. Just to uh, keep things active. There you go. So taking full advantage of the fuel. You can see the uh, cone at the end of the jet getting nice and red hot. He's gonna roll into the stage beams just like uh, any other race car and uh, send it down the quarter mile. 14,000 pounds of horsepower. 14,000 horsepower is gonna propel that jet dragster all the way down and uh, let's see if he gets in the fives. Let's see if he gets 300 miles per hour. He can do it. He can do it. Of course he can. Volcano Dragster, three stage, getting set. Just a few more inches and he is off. Down track like an arrow. Off the gas, 551, 551, 286 miles an hour. So uh, great pass on the Jet Dragster, 551. 286 miles per hour. You catch it on the instant replay. Just streaks by at the top end on the instant replay. You get a sense of how fast he was going. 551, 286 miles per hour. So how about that? A volcano jet dragster. That's a once in a lifetime experience. You don't see that very often. So I want to thank uh, Chuck Haynes and uh, his crew for coming up here to Mission Raceway and uh, putting on quite a show for us here at Smoke, Fire and Thunder presented by Lordco Auto Parts. So we've got uh, some finals that are in the staging lanes. That will uh, bring the evening to a close. So just as a result of uh, any debris kicked up by the jet, there's a tremendous amount of air running through the engine and kicking up some debris. We like to uh, do a little bit of clean and also the kerosene jet fuel. Uh, it does have uh, the potential of leaving a residue on the racetrack, so we'll do a little bit of rub and then uh, get that track ready for the final rounds that are uh, sitting in the staging lanes. If you are in a final, we've called you to the staging lanes. You should be there, and I see a whole host of cars from all the categories yet to run final round, and so they are in the staging lanes ready for that to happen.
Hey, just want to say, thank all you race fans. I know a lot of you have to head home and everything else. We want to take particular time to mention how much we appreciate you uh, joining us here for Smoke, Fire, and Thunder on Saturday night. So uh, really appreciate seeing those stands so crowded. Still have some finals to run, so uh, don't feel you have to rush off just yet. But if you are heading home, we urge you to drive safely. If you were visiting the beer garden, make sure you make use of that designated driver and uh, drive safely on your way home. It's going to take a few minutes to get out of the facility. You see the uh, tail lights all over the place. So uh, it is one of those things where lots of people we love to see out here, but it's going to take a while to uh, get everybody off the property. So uh, don't feel you have to rush off. All right. We uh, thank you for joining us. We've got some finals to run and we're going to start that off right here, right now with Hot Rod. Out of time. That is the Mark Renzinger car here tower side. Martin Jackman from Mission in the 64 Chevelle. Jackman dialed in at 1302. This is final in Hot Rod. Mark Brenzinger dialed in at 965. So the handicap going to the Chevelle wagon over on the spectator side. Hot Rod category presented this weekend by Badass Garage. And that is uh, definitely an appropriate sponsor. Both cars leave clean and green as usual. Brenzinger wheels up launch in hot pursuit of the Chevelle. Martin Jackman goes too quick breaks out dialed in at 1302 ran 13 flat so the wind light for mark brenzinger 966 at 136 miles per hour so congratulations to mark he'll be picking up his trophy and getting his picture taken here tomorrow so mark brenzinger your winner in hot rod Hey, attention in the pits. We're making that final call for Outlaw 275, Limited Street, and 604. Need you to the staging lights, ASCP, Outlaw 275, Limited Street, and 604. Here is our Pro Bracket, Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket Final. Bobby Ehlers and Ross Walker. Again, handicap coming into play as Bobby Ehlers in the 89 Mustang here, tower side. Dialed in at 10.53, Ross Walker, 10.11. So the little black Mustang here beside the tower is going to get the handicap start. We'll leave ahead of Ross Walker in that Chevy 2. Classic Ford versus Mustang, or Ford versus Chevy battle, I should say. Mustang versus Chevy 2. Ehlers is wheels up, off and running. Ross Walker in hot pursuit. And he's going to get there first. 10, 11 with a three. So dead on three he runs. 131 miles an hour. Six thousandths of a second was the margin of victory at the stripe. Six thousandths of a second. And Ross Walker is your winner in Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. So working our way through the finals here. And next up, Craig Johnson on the start line. Final in Super Pro. This is the Vancouver Car Wrap Super Pro category final. It's going to be Craig Johnson here in the tower side in the station wagon. Stefan Robert from Courtney in the bucket. 34 Chevy Roadster, 496 cubic inches. Sitting in front of Stefan Robert, 854. So it's a quick little Roadster, that's for sure. Craig Johnson, well, he's one of the real consistent runners here. He gets the handicap start, goes 1095 on a dial. So you'll see the tree come down first for the station wagon. He gets to leave first. Is off and running. Red light start for Stefan Robert. Red light takes him out, gives the win to Craig Johnson. 
So Johnson picks up a win, runs 11.08, 101 miles an hour, and that's going to add one more trophy to the trophy case in the Johnson household. Johnson's custom exhaust, 79 Malibu wagon, your winner here in the Vancouver Car Wrap Super Pro category for Smoke, Fire, and Thunder presented by Lord Co. So once again, we have called Outlaw 275, Limited Street, and 604. Finalists, we need you in staging lanes ASAP. Outlaw 275, bring them up. Limited Street, bring them up. And 604. Yeah, you know the drill. Bring them up. Hey, it looks like final for 604 coming under the bridge. I recognize that green goblin Hammy Cuda anywhere. Don Murray over on the spectator side. Old traditional 426 Hemi stuffed under the hood of that 1970 Cuda. That is a classic muscle machine. Hailing out of White Rock, Don Murray. 9.07 is the dial-in time for him. Mike Probin in the other lane from Vernon. 9.60, so not far behind. 9.03 is the best that Don has done today, while Mike, his best time, 9.76. So the handicap going to play into this as long uh, as well as the reaction time. He who leaves first has a really good chance. Time is right on. That's going to aid in the win. But to date, it's a win light for Don Murray. So 9 2 0, 9 20, 136 miles an hour. Don Murray picking up the win in 6 0 4. So Mike Probin going too fast, went under his dial 9 58. He was just trying to stay ahead of Don Murray the whole time. Matter of fact, it was up until the very end, Mike ahead, but Don Murray just sailed on by 920 with an eight, 136 miles per hour. So congratulations to that whole team, Don Murray and that crew. Don, of course, is uh, the uh, president, the CEO, the founding member back in 2016 of the uh, 604 Top Street category. This uh, event, they are sponsored by Crown Door Corporations. So, big shout out to Crown Door for all of the uh, support that they have provided to the uh, 604 people. So, just a couple of finals left. They're all getting suited up in the staging lanes. We're taking the opportunity because these are... Uh, a little bit quicker cars to uh, do a little bit of track preparation, run the uh, tractor up and down a couple of times, just build a little bit of heat back into the track. Everybody, I believe, is going to be racing to the eighth mile, but then you still need to have a good clean shutoff area after the eighth mile. So uh, 
That's why you see the tractor running just a little bit further than it normally would. So next up after the tractor is going to be just a little bit of spray, get a little bit of traction compound on the surface as well with track cooling off throughout the day. Just want to make sure that we maintain the same level of stickiness that was there before. So Sticky Steve is going to run the sprayer up and down both sides. Just lay down a nice little coat of VHT traction compound. Hey, tension in the pits. Tension in the pits. There is a side-by-side uh, -side sitting in the uh, pit lane one. And we need you to uh, move that, please, as it is blocking some traffic. Side-by-side -side in the pit lane, lane one. If you could uh, kindly move that as soon as possible, if that's yours. We would ask for your cooperation to get that out of lane one in the staging lanes. Tractor coming off right now. Steve, Sticky Steve, going to be uh, spraying the other side. So it's been quite a race day. We've had uh, a fair bit of activity on the racetrack with, uh, well, blocks being tossed up and having to replace all those blocks from a couple of different passes. So that was pretty exciting. We've had the uh, dark side top fuel dragster make a pass, and uh, boy, that uh, sort of sets you on your toes. And, of course, the jet dragster making a couple of passes. That is uh, all part of the action here, smoke, fire, and thunder. Presented by Lord Co. We do have a full day of racing tomorrow that's going to start at 10 a.m. And it'll start with the uh, bracket categories as they uh, get set for race number 11 in the Summit ET Racing Series. So we'll see <coughs> all the sportsman cars, the pro cars, and super pro, the thunder and lightning, 
Hot Rod Junior Street Bike Super Combo and Super Shifter all take place uh, as they race their way through uh, another race day. And in between all of that will be uh, the elimination rounds for Canada West Door Slammers. They'll uh, have one final qualifying pass in the morning at 11. And then starting at 12 on the hour, they'll be uh, working their way through the various elimination rounds, Canada West Door Slammer action. So it's going to be a full day again tomorrow. And I see uh, Steve coming off the track now. So uh, we uh, should see... Cars rolling around for finals here in just a second. So attention in the pits, that side-by-side. -side. That belongs to Tej Sanga. Tej, we need you to move that side-by-side. -side. ASAP, please. Final round then in Outlaw 275, NBA Fabrication, Outlaw 275. Dan Rod Rieg over here at Towerside just completing that burnout in his 81 Malibu. The boo, he calls it. 
Sponsored by Ken Specialty Automotive, Westar Trailer, SD Performance, McGraw Metalworks, Gibson Racing Transmission in the other lane. Just getting in the water box, Jordan Brandon calls that Camaro side money. So Jordan has run a best of 445. Dan Rodriguez, 456. Remember, this is heads up to the eighth mile. So 445, 456, not a whole lot in it. And uh, a lot of things can happen, even over one eighth of a mile. Big plume for the Nitrous out of Dan Rodriguez. Brandon still backing up very carefully, taking their time. This is final for MDA Fabrication Outlaw 275. They've been uh, qualifying and racing for two days now, and uh, it all comes down to this run. Who is going to take home the trophy? Is it going to be uh, Dan Rodriguez or is it going to be Jordan Brandon? So Dan Rodriguez up to the uh, staging line first and uh, Jordan Brandon taking time crew member motioning him forward now a little bit quicker you don't want to hold up the competition any longer than you have to or want to or need to both staged dan goes right in gotta get that car in there and they are off okay both of them losing traction and getting back on it who gets there to the eighth first it'll be dan rod Ree. four five forty six and 150 miles an hour 583 for Jordan. They both lost traction off the hit, and uh, it was a matter of uh, doing a little bit of pedaling, and they got it back together again. So Dan Rodriguez, congratulations to that whole team. Your winner here this evening in MDA Outlaw 275. Here we go, final, final for Saturday. Smoke, fire, and thunder. And it is going to be in the limited street category, Chris McGraw and Vanessa Richards. Winner here takes home the trophy in limited street. Vanessa Richards over on the Lord Co. Lane and Chris McGraw in the 1990 Mustang here on the tower side. Again, heads up to the eighth mile. Vanessa Richards has been number one all day. 538 with a five for quickest. 548. That's the uh, quickest for Chris McGraw. So taking full advantage. They want to stage it up just ever so carefully. And uh, this will be your final final. Both cars pre-staged, getting set. Tree is about to come down, and they are off. Wheels up for Vanessa Richards. Has a mean car tonight. Gets there first. 538. Chris McGraw out of the gas right at the hip. Not able to uh, put up much opposition. 538. It's good for the win for Vanessa Richards. 129 miles an hour, and that's our final final for the evening. We do have a couple of grudge matches that will be taking place, but for Smoke, Fire, and Thunder, that is going to be it for the evening. So we just want to thank everybody once again for uh, making their presence here at the racetrack, Mission Raceway. We really appreciate everything you're doing. We want to thank all of the Mission Raceway staff, the, 
all the hard work that was put in by the start line crew, the tower crew, the safety crew, and everybody who uh, had their work cut out for them. They got another whole day of racing tomorrow, so it's not quite over yet, but as far as today's action, other than uh, a couple of grudge matches that we'll see on the start line, that is going to be it for us here up in the tower. And we want to thank you for uh, joining us. Still quite a lineup getting out, but uh, it should be uh, moving along as we speak. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us, and uh, hope to see you here tomorrow. For day number three of Smoke, Fire, and Thunder, presented by Lord Coe.